His Majesty King Hamid bin Isa Al Khalifa visited yesterday the kingdom's distinguished guest, Egyptian President Adil Fattah Al Sisi, at his residence. They reviewed the long standing solid Bahraini Egyptian relations and ways to bolster them in various fields, underscoring the importance of continuous consultation and coordination between the two countries for the best interests of their brotherly peoples. His Majesty King Hamid lauded President al-Sisi's brotherly visit to the Kingdom of Bahrain, asserting that it reflects the depth and strength of the steadily progressing relations between Bahrain and Egypt. His Majesty the King voiced pride in the historical leading role played by brotherly Egypt in serving the Arab and Islamic nations, unifying stances and enhancing joint Arab action, stressing that a strong Egypt is positive for all Arab countries. For his part, the Egyptian president expressed sincere thanks and appreciation to His Majesty King Hamid for his role in strengthening and enhancing the Kingdom of Bahrain's relations with his country. He valued highly Bahrain's supportive stances towards Egypt and its people, wishing the Kingdom further progress and prosperity under His Majesty the King's leadership. His Majesty King Hamid and President al-Sisi then reviewed the latest regional and global developments and the need to coordinate unified stances in dealing with them. They also discussed other issues of common interest. His Majesty King Hamid bin Isa Al Khalifa sent a cable of condolences to Russian President Vladimir Putin on the victims of the Russian plane crash in the Sinai Peninsula. His Majesty the King extended deepest condolences to President Putin, the bereaved families and the friendly Russian people. His Majesty King Hamid bin Isa Al Khalifa received at Gudabiya Palace today Saudi Foreign Minister Adil bin Ahmed Al Juber, who is in Bahrain, to participate in the Manama Dialogue Forum. His Majesty the King underlined the depth of the fraternal historical relations existing between the two countries and their people in various fields. His Majesty the King also appreciated the historic role and the leadership of the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia under the leadership of the custodian of the two holy mosques, King Salman bin Abdulaziz Al Saud, in the consolidation of the GCC march and the service of the Arab and Islamic issues, as well as its efforts in strengthening security and stability in the region and international peace and security. They also discussed regional and international developments in the framework of joint cooperation and coordination between the two countries. For his part, the Saudi Foreign Minister expressed gratitude to His Majesty the King for the hospitality and warm reception and for Bahrain's hosting of the Manama Dialogue Forum. He also underlined his efforts of His Majesty the King and the leading role of His Majesty in promoting brotherly relations between the two countries, praising the positions of the Kingdom of Bahrain in GCC and Arab issues and the positive and fruitful contributions in strengthening security and stability in the region. His Majesty King Hamid bin Isa Al Khalifa received at Gudabia Palace today the German Defence Minister Dr Ursula von der Leyen, who was in Bahrain to take part in the Manama Dialogue. His Majesty the King underlined the distinguished progressing relations between the two countries in various domains, underlining Bahrain's keen desire to boost aspects of military and defence cooperation for the benefit of the two countries. His Majesty also underlined the contribution of Germany in promoting international peace and security. During the meeting, they also discussed regional and international issues and matters of common concern. For her part, the German Minister thanked His Majesty the King for his keen desire to boost relations with Germany.
His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa received at Gudabia Palace today the U.S. Deputy Foreign Minister Anthony Pelnekin. During the meeting, His Majesty the King reviewed with the U.S. official the historical close bilateral relations between the two countries and its pro progress at all levels. His Majesty the King underlined the keen desire of Bahrain to support these relations and upgrade them to wider horizons of joint cooperation and coordination for the benefits of the two countries and their peoples. His Majesty the King underlined the role played by the United States in supporting international efforts to establish security and stability in the region. The U.S. official expressed thanks and appreciation to His Majesty King Hamid for Bahrain's hosting of this important forum, which deals with various regional and international interests in security and political issues. He also praised the existing relations of cooperation between the two countries. His Majesty King Hamid bin Isa Al Khalifa received at Gudabia Palace today the Arab League Secretary General Dr. Nabil Al Arabi, the UN Envoy to Yemen Ismail Oud Al Sheikh, and GCC Secretary General Abdul Latif Al Zayani. His Majesty the King exchanged with them views on the agenda of the Manama Dialogue, including security, political, and economic issues of regional and international concern. They also reviewed the situation in Yemen, underlining the role of the United Nations in maintaining security and stability in Yemen. His Majesty also praised the role of the Arab League in serving Arab issues. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa received today at Gudabia Palace the British Secretary of State for Foreign and Commonwealth Affairs, Philip Hammond, on the sidelines of the 11th Manama Dialogue. During the meeting, His Majesty the King reviewed with the British official the long-standing deep and historic ties between Bahrain and the United Kingdom in various domains for the benefits of the two countries and their peoples. His Majesty the King blessed the British naval facilities in Bahrain, underlining Bahrain's support to all efforts to maintain international peace and security. His Majesty also underlined the contributions of Britain in maintaining peace and security in the region. They also reviewed regional and international developments.
His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa received at Gudabia Palace today Ms. Helen Clark, the Minister of the United Nations Development Programme. His Majesty the King underlined the efforts and initiatives launched by the United Nations Development Programme in Bahrain, which have contributed to strengthening the capacity of the Kingdom in the field of sustainable development and human development within the framework of the good relations and constructive cooperation with the United Nations. His Majesty the King stressed the support of the Kingdom of Bahrain for all developmental programs and initiatives undertaken by the United Nations organizations and his commitment to the establishment of an effective partnership with them. His Majesty thanked the UN official for her participation in the Manama Dialogue, which reflects the keenness of the international organization on different ideas and insights that contribute to the strengthening of ties and relations between the states. For her part, the Director of the United Nations Development Programme expressed her thanks and appreciation to His Majesty for supporting the programmes and initiatives launched by the United Nations Development Programme. His Royal Highness the Prime Minister, Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa, sent a cable of condolences to Russian President Vladimir Putin on the victims of the Russian plane crash in the Sinai Peninsula. His Royal Highness extended the deepest condolences to President Putin, the bereaved families and the friendly Russian people. Similar cables were sent by His Royal Highness the Prime Minister to Russian Prime Minister Dmitry Medvedev. His Royal Highness the Prime Minister Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa received today the United Nations Development Programme Director Helen Clark at Rafah Palace, who is on an official visit to Bahrain representing the UN to the Manama Dialogue 2015. He stressed that health, education, housing and creating job opportunities are priorities in the government's strategy, reflecting key fundamentals for sustainable development. He added that besides competently achieving the United Nations Millennium Development Goals, Bahrain is resolved to complete a new success story by achieving the post-2015 development agenda. His Royal Highness the Prime Minister urged concerted efforts for a more prosperous region and enhanced cooperation to overcome tensions and conflicts in the region. He said people in the region have had enough of conflict and war, noting that unstable security and economic conditions are an impediment to further development. He also affirmed that political and economic challenges in many parts of the world should not discourage the UN and its specialised agencies from continuing to support the development effort in developing countries and people's aspirations for a decent and prosperous life. His Royal Highness the Premier highlighted the need for the international community to act more effectively to fast-track sustainable development by tackling the causes of conflicts and wars which are destroying nations' resources. He said that protecting the security and stability of mankind is a common responsibility and every international effort aimed at ensuring people's security has to be backed, pointing out Bahrain's keenness to support the pioneering role of the UNDP in achieving the Millennium Development Goals and boosting human development worldwide. The UNDP director lauded His Royal Highness the Premier's unflinching support and cooperation between Bahrain and the UNDP. She also hailed the Kingdom's success in achieving the Millennium Development Goals, stressing the keenness of the UNDP to further bolster cooperation with Bahrain.
His Royal Highness the Prime Minister, Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa, received at Rafah Palace today the senior Singaporean Minister of State for Foreign and Defence Affairs, Dr Mohammed Maliki bin Osman, who is currently visiting the Kingdom of Bahrain to participate in the 11th Regional Security Summit, the IISS Manama Dialogue. His Royal Highness commended the development and growth of bilateral economic, trade and investment cooperation ties between Bahrain and Singapore and affirmed Bahrain's keenness to further consolidate bilateral cooperation with Singapore in a view of strong friendship, understanding and coordination regarding many regional and international issues. He said the region is experiencing a big challenge in terms of sustainability of development amidst an unstable economic and security atmosphere. He also said the Kingdom of Bahrain extends the hand of cooperation with all nations, including Southeast Asian nations, which have economic capabilities and ambitions for development and prosperity similar to Bahrain's. His Royal Highness welcomed any Bahraini Singaporean cooperation to consolidate bilateral ties and reap the benefits for both countries, as well as promoting higher levels of cooperation. The Singaporean Foreign and Defence Affairs Minister of State expressed his gratitude and appreciation to the Prime Minister for his attention in further bolstering bilateral cooperation relations, praising the current development and progress of Bahrain in all fields. He went on to express his country's keenness on further expanding relations in order to achieve the shared interests of both countries. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, Deputy Supreme Commander and First Deputy Prime Minister, Prince Salman bin Hamid Al Khalifa, today bid farewell to the President of Egypt, Adul Fattah Al Sisi. During his visit to Bahrain, His Majesty King Hamid met with President Al Sisi and reviewed the long standing ties between Egypt and Bahrain. President Al Sisi also gave the opening address at the 11th edition of the Manama Dialogue, in which he outlined the complex security issues impacting the region and the need to focus on social and economic development to support long term stability. The Deputy Prime Minister, Sheikh Mohammed bin Mubarak Al Khalifa, the Egyptian ambassador to Bahrain, and a number of senior officials were also in attendance.
His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, Deputy Supreme Commander and First Deputy Prime Minister today sent a letter to the Russian President Vladimir Putin and to Prime Minister Dmitry Medvedev expressing condolences on behalf of the citizens of Bahrain following the tragic plane crash that killed more than 200 Russian citizens over the Sinai Peninsula in Egypt. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, Deputy Supreme Commander and First Deputy Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamid Al Khalifa today met with Saudi Foreign Minister Adol bin Ahmed Al Jubair, who is in Bahrain to participate in the Manama Dialogue Forum. During the meeting, His Royal Highness praised the pivotal role played by Saudi Arabia in regional affairs and highlighted the GCC country's successful diplomatic efforts to help establish dialogue to secure lasting peace in the Republic of Yemen. In this regard, His Royal Highness underscored the importance of continuing to align GCC efforts in order to achieve GCC countries' shared objectives. Other issues currently affecting regional security and stability were also discussed during the meeting. In response, Minister Al Jubair expressed Saudi Arabia's appreciation for Bahrain's unwavering support to GCC cooperation and its effective role in maintaining regional security and stability through its participation in the Saudi-led coalition in Yemen. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, Deputy Supreme Commander and First Deputy Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa today met Yemen's Foreign Minister Riyad Yassin on the sidelines of the Manama Dialogue. During the meeting, His Royal Highness welcomed the President of Yemen's position on working towards a political solution to solve the current crisis and achieve stability in Yemen and emphasized that Bahrain will continue to support the legitimate government and all humanitarian efforts to support those affected by the conflict. His Royal Highness then welcomed the participation of the Foreign Minister at this year's Manama Dialogue, noting that it demonstrates the government's commitment to achieving lasting security and stability in Yemen and the region. For his part, the Foreign Minister expressed his appreciation for Bahrain's continued efforts as part of the Arab coalition led by Saudi Arabia and Bahrain's significant contributions to protecting Yemen and all its people. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, Deputy Supreme Commander and First Deputy Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa today met the British Secretary of State for Foreign and Commonwealth Affairs, Philip Hammond, on the sidelines of the 11th Manama Dialogue. During the meeting, His Royal Highness and Foreign Minister Hammond welcomed the deep and historic ties between Bahrain and the United Kingdom, which underpin the country's collaborative efforts in addressing a range of critical issues facing the region. His Royal Highness emphasized that the GCC-led coalition's decisive military campaign in Yemen has helped advance security and stability in the country, and that a political agreement must now be pursued in order to resolve the conflict. His Royal Highness highlighted the swift action applied to resolving the conflict in Yemen alongside close collaboration between members of the coalition has effectively helped to protect the country's sovereignty and its state institutions. His Royal Highness praised the strategic partnership between the Bahrain Defence Force and the British Armed Forces, which covers various areas including training and knowledge. Addressing the current crisis in Syria, His Royal Highness stressed that the need for aligning regional and international efforts to resolve the crisis has never been greater and that the dire humanitarian situation must be addressed as quickly as possible. The meeting also presented an opportunity to discuss the P5 plus one nuclear deal with Iran. His Royal Highness noted that while Bahrain welcomes the deal, Iran's continued interference in the kingdom's affairs seeks only to endanger security and stability in Bahrain and poses a serious threat to wider regional stability. His Royal Highness and Foreign Secretary Hammond then discussed the rise of violent extremism across the region and agreed that military action cannot be the only solution, but parallel with the international community, social and economic development programs will deliver hope opportunity and prosperity to the people of the region and they must be carried out. In conclusion, His Royal Highness welcomed the UK's positive engagement on Bahrain's domestic programme of reform, noting the UK's valuable expertise in the areas of oversight and institutional reform. His Royal Highness Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, Crown Prince, Deputy Supreme Commander and First Deputy Prime Minister, today met with the German Defence Minister, Dr Ursula von der Leyen, on the sidelines of the 11th Manama Dialogue. During the meeting, His Royal Highness underscored the importance of preserving the state foundations as a means to maintain long-term stability. In this regard, His Royal Highness highlighted that it is this commitment that has underpinned every aspect of the Saudi-led Arab coalition's efforts in Yemen to restore the country's stability. 
His Royal Highness went on to affirm that it is essential to prevent extremist movements from taking advantage of current efforts aimed at achieving long-term positive change. His Royal Highness then noted Germany's continued support to the GCC on a range of regional security and development challenges. His Royal Highness also highlighted the strong bilateral relations between Bahrain and Germany and stressed the importance of continuing to enhance political, economic and security cooperation and coordination. His Royal Highness then praised Germany's participation at this year's event as it reflects the country's commitment to addressing key security issues impacting the region. His Royal Highness and Defence Minister Leon also discussed a range of other regional and international issues. His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, son of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, also attended the meeting. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, Deputy Supreme Commander and First Deputy Premier Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa met the United States Deputy Secretary of State, Anthony Blinken, and the Commander at United States Central Command, General Lloyd J. Austin. His Royal Highness stressed the importance of strategic partnerships between regional powers and the international community in order to deal with the current situation in Syria. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince affirmed the importance of enhancing the historic strategic cooperation between the Kingdom and the United States in order to participate in maintaining the region's security and stability. His Royal Highness also hailed the Saudi-led Arab coalition operations in Yemen in order to maintain security and stability in the region. Both sides also reviewed a number of regional and international developments of mutual interest. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, Deputy Supreme Commander and First Deputy Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa met with a delegation of British Members of Parliament and the Conservative Middle East Council today, headed by Sir Alan Duncan MP. During the meeting, His Royal Highness highlighted that Bahraini-UK relations are built on deep-rooted ties between the two countries and that these historic ties underpin positive collaboration across a range of areas. His Royal Highness welcomed the UK's continued support to Bahrain's domestic reform programme, stressing that reform is a sustainable and collaborative process and that the Kingdom remains resolute in achieving its goals under His Majesty the King's reform and development programme. His Royal Highness also highlighted that Bahrain's continued collaboration with its allies and partners forms an important component of its domestic and international policy decision-making process. During the meeting, His Royal Highness and members of the delegation also discussed a number of regional and international issues that were covered during this year's Manama Dialogue. During the second day of the Manama Dialogue Security Conference, His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, Deputy Supreme Commander and First Deputy Premier Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa held a series of bilateral meetings with senior foreign officials, including Salmi Hamad, Minister of Interior of the Hashemite Kingdom of Jordan, Yusuf Amrani, Head of Mission at the Royal Cabinet of Morocco, Dr. Mohammed Maliki bin Osman, Senior Minister of State, Ministry of Defence and Ministry of Foreign Affairs of the Republic of Singapore, Lieutenant General Sheikh Abdullah Al Nawaf Al Sabah, Deputy of the Kuwaiti Chief of Staff, and Sheikh Tamar Al Ali Al Sabah, President of the National Security Bureau of Kuwait. In the meetings, His Royal Highness emphasised the importance of the delegates' participation in the conference's discussions, which reflects their commitment to working together to resolve complex regional and international security issues. His Royal Highness also welcomed the shared international commitment to protecting the region's citizens from extremist ideologies, which only serve to undermine regional stability.
The Deputy Prime Minister Sheikh Mohammed bin Mubarak met the Saudi Foreign Minister Adil al Jaber on the sidelines of the IISS Manama Dialogue. Sheikh Mohammed bin Mubarak stressed that the historic brotherly consolidated ties between the Kingdom and Saudi Arabia in various fields. The meeting discussed the recent regional and international developments as well as the results of the Syrian peace talks in Vienna. Deputy Prime Minister Sheikh Mohammed bin Mubarak Al Khalifa received Arab League Secretary General Dr. Nabil Al Arabi on the occasion of his participation in the IISS Manama Dialogue 2015. He welcomed him, underlining the key role of the Arab League in boosting pan Arab work in various fields amid fast paced regional developments and the challenges they pose, which require more coordination between the Arab countries. Both sides also discussed developments at both Arab and regional levels. The Arab League Secretary General expressed appreciation to the Deputy Prime Minister upon his welcome, lauding the role of Bahrain in protecting Arab issues. Deputy Prime Minister Sheikh Mohammed bin Mubarak met the United Nations Development Programme Director Helen Clark on the sidelines of the IISS Manama Dialogue. Sheikh Mohammed bin Mubarak hailed the role and efforts of the UNDP in achieving development projects and lauded the strong ties and cooperation between Bahrain and the United Nations. The Director of the UNDP expressed appreciation to the Deputy Prime Minister upon his welcome and on the occasion of participating in the IISS Manama Dialogue. Deputy Premier Sheikh Ali bin Khalifa Al Khalifa received the Lebanese Interior Minister Nahad Al Mashnuk today on the occasion of his participation in the 11th edition of the IISS Manama Dialogue. The Deputy Premier lauded the strength of Bahraini Lebanese relations and the keenness of the two countries to continue their efforts to enhance their joint action and cooperation. The Lebanese Interior Minister conveyed greetings and wishes of further progress and prosperity to the Kingdom of Bahrain. The Deputy Premier discussed with the Lebanese Minister ways to bolster bilateral cooperation as well as issues of mutual concern. The Lebanese Interior Minister is currently on a visit to the Kingdom to participate in the Manama Dialogue, which commenced yesterday. The Commander of the Royal Guard, Staff Brigadier, His Highness Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa, received in the presence of the Commander of the Special Royal Guard Force Major, His Highness Sheikh Khalid bin Hamad Al Khalifa, the Yemeni Foreign Minister, Riyad Yassin. His Highness Sheikh Nasser underlined Bahrain's firm support to Yemen and its legitimate government in facing threats and challenges. For his part, His Highness Sheikh Khalid underlined the honourable stances with the Yemeni people, underlining the role coalition forces under the leadership of Saudi Arabia in protecting legitimacy in Yemen.
Interior Minister Lieutenant General Sheikh Rashid bin Abdullah Al Khalifa received in the presence of Bahrain Ambassador to the United Kingdom Sheikh Fawaz bin Mohammed Al Khalifa, the British Parliamentary Delegation headed by MP Sir Alan Duncan, Chief of Public Security Major General Tariq Al Hassan and General Director of Interior Ministry Court Major General Riyad Eid Abdullah attended the meeting as well. The Minister welcomed the United Kingdom delegation members who are in a visit to Bahrain to participate in the 11th session of the Manama Dialogue, highlighting the importance of the topics of the forum that attracts high international participation as part of joint efforts to reinforce regional security. Interior Minister informed the delegation of the efforts of the Interior Ministry to protect security and general order and ensure the safety of all citizens and residents in addition to providing human rights guarantees as part of the comprehensive reform project of His Majesty King Hamid bin Isa Al Khalifa. The meeting reviewed bilateral relations between the two friendly countries and security cooperation along with topics of common interest. For his part, Sir Duncan hailed the vision of the Interior Minister and the progress Bahrain has made since 2011. The Minister of Foreign Affairs, Sheikh Khalid bin Ahmed bin Mohammed Al Khalifa, delivered a speech in the plenary session at the Manama Dialogue entitled American Policies and Regional Security, in which he affirmed that the situation in Syria is the most challenging for countries in the region and the crisis is not limited to these countries in view of its multiple grave effects. Sheikh Khalid said that the main reason for what is taking place in Syria was that a vacuum was created after 2011 that allowed terrorist groups like Daesh to establish strongholds and then use those territories as a launching pad outside Syrian borders. The Minister of Foreign Affairs stressed that the solution in Syria must be based on returning the Syrians to a state of unity as soon as possible, adding that Syrians must be given enough hope and belief to remain in Syria and work towards building a better future. Sheikh Khalid said that the presence of Daesh in Syria is not an impediment to a political solution between the Syrians. It is what makes the necessity of a political solution all the more pressing. The Minister of Foreign Affairs said that Iran has provided sanctuary and financial support for those charged with conducting terrorist acts in Bahrain. It hosted Bahraini citizens in IRGC training camps where potential terrorists learn skills such as IED construction, marksmanship and weapons smuggling. Iran has also conducted smuggling operations to bring in explosives and weapons, including C4, Claymore mines and AK-47 assault rifles. On the chances of improving relations with Iran, Sheikh Khalid said that the matter is pending on the behaviour of Iran and its commitment to good neighbourly relations, as well as non-interference in the kingdom's internal affairs. On developments in Yemen, the Minister of Foreign Affairs said that the GCC is committed to continue its strategic role for the return of security and stability to Yemen, eradicate groups that turned against the country's legitimacy and tried to destroy state institutions, as well as reneged on the commitments to spread chaos and terror. Sheikh Khalid pointed out that the GCC military intervention in Yemen was not taken lightly. It was the final option after running out of all diplomatic and political means, and that this intervention would end once security and peace returned to Yemen. He praised the major role of the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia and the rest of the GCC states, as well as the King Salman Humanitarian Aid and Relief Centre. With regards to developments in the Al-Aqsa Mosque and continued attacks by the Israeli occupation authorities, the foreign minister held Israel responsible to the deterioration of the situation in Palestinian lands due to continued Israeli violations of international law that criminalize the harming of religious sites and ensure their protection. He stressed the rejection of targeting Al-Aqsa Mosque, calling for sufficient protection to the Palestinian people and safeguarding of the holy site. In conclusion, Sheikh Khaled affirmed the commitment of the Kingdom of Bahrain by working with other countries to bolster security and peace, as well as taking all measures that ensure maintaining peace in the region.
The Minister of Foreign Affairs, Sheikh Khalid bin Ahmed bin Mohammed Al Khalifa, and the UK Secretary of State for Foreign and Commonwealth Affairs, Philip Hammond, attended the groundbreaking ceremony for the establishment of the Marine Facilities Headquarters in the Kingdom of Bahrain. On the occasion, Sheikh Khalid said that the move reflects the strong cooperation between the two countries in all fields, including the security field, and their keenness to bolster the levels of cooperation in line with their aspirations and to further boost mutual interests. He said that the United Kingdom was one of the key countries contributing to efforts to bolster security and stability in the region and the world in view of its strong ties with countries across the world, in addition to its openness and cooperation with constructive efforts and initiatives aimed at developing its relations with the GCC states at various levels. The Minister of Foreign Affairs affirmed that construction of the British Marine Facilities Headquarters in the Kingdoms reflected the UK's commitment towards the Kingdom of Bahrain and the region in general, which will strengthen the partnership between the two countries and enable the forces to carry out their duties respectively. This, he added, will positively reflect on bolstering regional security and peace, as well as boost bilateral relations towards wider horizons in various fields. The International Institute of Strategic Studies Manama Dialogue is in its second day with discussions ongoing on regional security and stability. More now in this report from Marie Claire Honeywell. It's day two of the IISS Manama Dialogue and discussions are in full swing, with delegates speaking openly and in earnest about the issues at hand. It's going very well. Issues are being discussed in detail. Questions are very relevant and everyone speaking with uh, uh, in, in an honest manner and in an open manner and I think it's very useful. The summit offers the opportunity to discuss regional security problems in detail and put forward guidelines for possible solutions. I don't think an event like this can come up with a solution. What it can do is make the relationships and have the conversations uh, that can then influence the principles. It'll be the principles, uh, uh, the, the foreign ministers and the states concerned that have to come up with the solutions alongside the other actors, which are the uh, representatives of some of the non-state forces, the alliance of uh, re resistance in Syria, for example, uh, but also the Syrian regime. They have got to, they've got to sit down and have that conversation about the transition. While it is not expected that the dialogue will find instant solutions to the issues at hand, there is a hope that it will result in a collective review of the United Nations Charter to reflect the changing times. I myself hope that there will be a recommendation that the uh, collective security system of the United Nations will be looked at in a comprehensive manner, not in a piecemeal manner, and that the United Nations will review the charter of uh, uh, which created the organization after 70 years so so many things changed and it's about time to do so reporting from the 11th annual IISS Manama dialogue for Bahrain television I'm Marie Claire Honeywell